Imagine you are sending a power at 420 kilo volts over a very long distance, let's say 500 kilometers. And when that transmission line ends and the voltage is received at the receiving end substation, it's no more the 420 kilo volts. It is, let's say, 600 kilo volt. The gap is huge and this is actually happens. This is the true uh, effect that happens in the power system. And if we do not have reactors in the system, then the situation will get worse. There will be a lot of issues that may happen because we don't have reactors in the system. And in this video, we are going to talk about what is this reactor? Why do we need them in a power system? Why it is so crucial for a long distance transmission line? And in the end, we will also have a look at an actual simulator where I'll simulate uh, the transmission line and we'll see the impact of having reactors in the system. So certainly it's a very, very interesting video and I want you to watch it till the end. Hello everyone, welcome back to one another interesting video. Now in the previous video, we discussed about the very interesting effect, the Ferranti effect. And many of you commented on that video that you want a dedicated video explaining why we need reactors in the system and how it can help us in compensating the Ferranti effect. And since most of you commented on that video, here is a dedicated video in which I'll be explaining why we need reactors in the system. So let us start. So in the previous video, we discussed about the Ferranti effect. It's certainly a very, very interesting effect that happens. Now what happens is generally in the long distance transmission line, 200 kilometers and above, uh, the Im impact of capacitance, inductance comes into picture and that creates uh, certain effects which we want to avoid. So for example, uh, we have let's say long transmission line and if you see, these are the line that we have. This is the line which is carrying the current, it's a live uh, line and then at the bottom we have the ground. So if you notice, this is nothing but a capacitor, right? We have two uh, things insulated by the insulating medium. So this is nothing but the capacitance. So this is line to ground capacitance. Not only this, if you see, we have these two lines running parallel and in between these two lines also, there is insulation, which is by the way, provided by the air. And this also will form a capacitance, right? And similarly, this transmission line is nothing but a conductor which is carrying alternating current. So there will be certainly uh, inductance also present in the line. Now, what happens is when the line is completely loaded, 100% loaded, then this inductor and this capacitor, the total effect of capacitance cancel out each other and there is not an issue, right? So that is the perfectly okay uh, scenario. The problem starts when there is, let's say, very light load on the system or absolutely no load on the system. In that scenario, what happens is uh, the current flowing into the system will be less for sure. And as a result, the inductive reactance will go down, right? But there will be sufficient current flowing in the system which will charge these capacitors, Right. And in the transmission line, the capacitors are divided equally. So there will be capacitance at the sending end. There will be capacitance at the receiving end. Now, what is happening here is uh, since the inductive reactance is gone down, the effect of inductive reactance is also low, but the capacitance is still there in the system, even if there is no load. And this capacitive uh, reactance XC takes over the system. This effect dominates over uh, the inductive reactants. And as a result, uh, it adds up. And in the end, the voltage that you get is bigger than that of the voltage that you are sending. Now, very important why this is happening because there is no load on the transmission line or the load is uh, not very high. In that scenario, uh, the inductive reactance is going down, capacitive reactance is uh, dominating. And that's why the receiving end voltage increases. And this is nothing but what we refer to as the Ferranti effect. We, we discussed about this in the previous video. If you haven't seen that, I'll recommend you watch that. Uh, I'll put link for it down in the description. So what is happening is uh, the capacitive inductance is dominating. So we need to somehow reduce that. And what is exactly opposite to that of uh, the capacitive reactance? 
if you said inductive reactance you are 100% right inductive reactance is uh, opposite to that of the capacitive reactance so somehow we need to add a inductive reactance in the system and once you do that uh, these effects will cancel out each other and uh, at the receiving end will get uh, the same voltage let me explain that to you using uh, the mathematical example here now to understand this uh, effect more clearly let us take one real life example and this example i'm taking from a book uh, electrical machines drives and power system by theodore wildi it's a really great book and i'll strongly recommend if you want to watch uh, read that uh, definitely go it will really help you and if you want to know what are some of the other books that i recommend you will find uh, the recommendation list down in the description so here is our example we have rated voltage as 735 kilo volts three phase we have operating voltage as 727 kilo volts uh, the transmission line length is 600 kilometers uh, the inductive reactance per kilometer is 0.5 ohms similarly the capacitive reactance that we have is 300 kilo ohms per kilo meter now with this data this data is enough for us to draw the equivalent circuit of this transmission line certainly it's a very big transmission line uh, almost 600 km so let us go and draw the equivalent circuit first uh, let's do few calculation here so first of course let us uh, uh, calculate the sending end voltage per phase so 727 by root 3 and that's going to give us 420 kV this is line to neutral voltage guys please remember now i am considering only the single phase here for simplicity purpose so single phase voltage is 420 kV then we can calculate the inductive reactance per phase uh, for the whole length of line uh, by simply multiplying the total length of the line and that's going to give us 300 ohms similarly uh, we can do it for the capacitive reactance xc and that's going to give us 500 ohms so 300 kilo ohms uh, divided by 600 kilometers uh, and that's going to give us 500 ohms now with this information we can certainly draw an uh, equivalent circuit so you can see it here so we have a single phase generator just for understanding purpose and the voltage that we are sending is 420 kilo volts Uh, we have uh, the transmission line uh, inductive reactance which is 300 ohms and of course there will be capacitance at the sending end and also at the receiving end now when we do the equivalent circuit at using the pi model what we have to do is uh, the capacitive reactance is equally divided between the sending end voltage and also at the receiving end voltage so when we convert the capacitance into capacitive reactance it becomes two times and that's why the xc1 and xc2 is 1000 ohms why 1000 ohms because we saw uh, the reactance was 500 ohms capacitive reactance and that's going to become 500 into 2 and that's going to give us 1000 ohms so xc1 and xc2 is 1000 ohms and with the help of all this data we can now actually calculate uh, the voltage that we may receive at the receiving end and to do that we can simply use this formula which is er is basically the receiving end voltage is equals to the sending end voltage times uh, the xc2 because this is the circuit that we are talking about here uh, let me grab the pen so this is the circuit that we are talking so xc2 Uh, which is 1000 ohms again divided by xc2 minus xl which is 300 ohms right so if you put uh, the values in the formula what you get is this is the value that we put and then you see the receiving end voltage is going up to 600 kilo volts which is almost 43% increase uh, in the voltage that we are sending we are sending 420 we are receiving 600 kilo volts this is huge the gap is huge and certainly uh, the receiving end equipments are not designed to carry that and this is also not acceptable by the system so certainly this is a problem right why this is happening now if you focus on, on the formula here you will get the answer you see the problem is this the value of inductive reactance is less compared to the capacitive reactance and as a result uh, the capacitive reactance is dominating which is giving us uh, the higher voltage at the receiving end well 
if this is the problem what is the solution how we can eliminate the capacitive reactance of course by adding uh, the inductive reactance into the system if you add more inductive reactance in this particular case uh, then this will drop and it it will come to the value which we are sending which is 420 kilo volts and that is the very reason why we need uh, in reactors shunt reactors in uh, the power system now please note this is uh, true when the transmission lines are you know very long 300 kilometers 400 500 600 and like that in that scenario having the cap inductor shunt reactants uh, reactor is very very crucial now if you see if you notice here of course uh, we have xc2 and xc2 is going to generate some uh, capacitive power reactive power and which is given by uh, you can simply uh, the 420 square of 420 kilo volts times uh, the thousand ohms and that's gonna give us 176 mvar volt ampere reactive right this is the power that it is generating so whatever inductive reactance or the reactor that you are going to place in the system it should be of 176 mvar per phase please remember we are discussing per phase uh, scenario here so here is the reactor that we have added now after adding this reactor the receiving end voltage will be 420 kilo volts clear but this is not going to solve 100% problems because what is happening is uh, this is addressing uh, the XC2 that we have here, the receiving end. But we still have one more capacitive reactance which is at the sending end. So ideally, you should also be adding one reactor on the sending end. And that is the reason why uh, when the transmission lines are huge, you will find a reactor is added to the sending end and also added to the receiving end. Because two capacitance uh, we have to deal with there. Now let us go to the simulator and understand this in a better way. So here is uh, one example that I that we have. So this is the transmission line that we have. This is the generator single phase. For example, capacitance are shown here, and this is the load that we have. Okay. Now currently this load is uh, disconnected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, run this simulation and show you the difference between the sending end and the receiving end voltage. So you see the green dot indicates the voltage at the sending end which is 353 kilo volts RMS value and then receiving end you can see it's 522 kilo volts again very huge and not acceptable right this is this is nothing but the Faraday effect now what we will do let me actually add the load to this transmission line so I'm going to close this switch and then you see what happens. So now I've closed the switch and you can see uh, the RMS value at the receiving end is decreasing and it's almost, almost equal to the sending end. Now why this has happened? Because uh, the inductive reactance of uh, the load got added to the total inductive reactance. And as a result, the capacitive reactance and the inductive react reactance cancelled out each other. And now we have the equilibrium of the voltage. But the problem is when the load is disconnected. So when the load is uh, not there, uh, the receiving end voltage is going up. So how do we solve that? So as we discussed in the theory example that we saw, we need to add the reactance in the system, a reactor. So let us go and add that. So I'm going to add a reactor here. So here now I've added a reactor in the system, a shunt reactor in parallel. Now uh, let's see the same, uh, situation. So of course we have not connected it to the system so the situation looks the same uh, which was there previously so load is still disconnected now i am going to connect the reactor to the system and you see what happens so reactor is connected to the system and you can see even though load is not connected uh, the receiving end voltage is stabilized is almost equal identical to that of the sending end voltage and if imagine if you don't have uh, this reactor in the system, the receiving end voltage would be very, very high. And that is dangerous. And that is the very reason why we need shunt reactors in the system. But if you want to see one more interesting thing, now since we have added the reactor and it is helping us, so the receiving end voltage uh, is okay, perfectly fine. And this is the scenario which is okay for us when the line is lightly loaded. 
but what happens if the line gets is load back now the inductive reactance will dominate let's see let's see so what i'm going to do is i'm going to close uh, this load i'm going to add the load to the transmission line and you see what happens to the receiving end voltage you see the receiving end voltage starts to drop it has dropped to less than 270 kilo volts rms now why this is happening now this is exactly opposite scenario that what we saw right so we now in this scenario the inductive reactance is dominating to the capacitive reactance and as a result the voltage is decreasing again of course this is also not acceptable to us so in this scenario what we do we disconnect the reactor from the system so when you disconnect again you see uh, it reaches to the normal level and this can also happen when you adjust the load uh, the receiving end voltage will be adjusted and there will be a amount of load which is uh, which will be you know adjusting the receiving end voltage exactly to that of the sending end voltage and this is the load that we call as the surge impedance load this is the load at which uh, the transmission line compensate itself you don't need any sort of a reactor there but again if the load decreases then there will be changes in the voltage so that's why you will find we have two different types of reactors we have the fixed type version so when you know that the load on your transmission line is not going to reach to the surge impedance load in that case you can uh, you know connect the fixed type of reactor into the system uh, and it will do the job so you, you don't have to do anything but you know that uh, the surge in your transmission line the surge impedance load will be reached uh, multiple times in a day then you may have to connect and disconnect your reactors accordingly to the system and that's why we also get variable reactors nowadays so that is the scenario and i hope you understood these things the surge impedance load is very very important uh, and also very very interesting now let us go and quickly summarize uh, what we have learned in this video so first we saw that the receiving end voltage can increase to a very high level in light or no load condition on the transmission line which is what we refer to as the Ferranti effect and this is generally seen in transmission line which is more than 200 kilometers okay for lesser than that line you don't find reactors installed in the system and how do we address this of course by adding equal and opposite value inductive reactance which is nothing but the reactor and the system that can help in balancing the voltage levels we saw that using the mathematical expressions we saw that using the simulator also and most importantly the transmission line can compensate itself um, at the surge impedance load so this is the load where the inductive reactance and capacitive reactance of the system becomes equal so that type of line is what we call as the self compensated line all right so i hope you understood uh, what is this shunt reactors and why do we need it in the system if you wish to watch a dedicated video about the ferranti effect i have that uh, i'll give link for it down in the description you can go and check it out so now the effects of this transmission line the behavior of transmission line changes uh, based on if it is loaded if it is not loaded based on the distance if you want me to create a video explaining this behavior then comment transmission line behaviors if i get enough comments then definitely i'll be making a video on that if you want to learn more about the power system i have a dedicated playlist which talks on the power system i'll put a link for it down in the description you can go and check it out as well so thank you so much for watching if you found this video helpful then please do like this video and do subscribe for the channel uh, so that you don't miss any of the updates Thank you so much for watching guys, I'll see you in my next one but till then, keep watching, keep learning.